Saturday baseball on the show. It's the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Seattle Mariners. John Shabby and Chris Singleton with you. Here we go, Singy. The fans have been waiting for this Major League debut for a while, and it's finally here. There's a lot of hype around his talent, and now we get to see how that looks at the big league level. Yeah, this is the kind of game it's going to be shared all over social media later tonight. Baseball fans all across the world are aware of this debut, and we're lucky enough to be at the stadium for it, so I'm excited to see what he's got firsthand. My advice to him would just be to soak it all in. Don't worry about the results. Don't worry about the expectations. So just about set now and taking the ball for Seattle. Luis Castillo. And Singy, we were talking earlier about how he's doing a great job navigating through tough spots. I've just been so impressed with when it seems like there's more pressure, he's more calm and settles in. He's done an incredible job with runners in scoring position. Most guys, they get a little tight, they start to aim the baseball, but for some reason, he gets looser, the ball comes out of his hand with more life, and he's able to wiggle off the hook of you know, tough situations and get his team back in the dugout. First pitch, 640. And the 1 0. Way high. Two ball, no strike. Swing and a ball hit out towards left center field. And that one hops the wall. Into second safely. It's a leadoff double to start the game. Showed some really nice patience in that at bat. Worked himself into a good count. Put a really nice balanced swing on it. And when you can rope one into the gap like that, you're thinking extra bases from the first couple of steps out of the box. And he'll feel real good about that one. Here's Adley Rutschman. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Luis Castillo, a guy who debuted in 2017 with the Reds at 24 years old, multiple all-star appearances, traded to the Mariners at the deadline in 2022. You think about that triple-digit fastball, but the changeup is the thing that stands out. Yeah, and you could argue that he's got the best changeup in baseball. From the right side, it's like a Bugs Bunny pitch and works so well off of his fastball. The 1 0. And now 2 and nothing as that one missed below the knees. Appears they're working around him with the base open, Singy. Well, you know, these 2 0 counts, Boo, they're just not what they used to be. And we sound like old guys when I say that. But ultimately, this is a strategic game, and you expect to see this type of approach by the pitcher in this situation. Oh, nice play to first. And that's a great play for the out. Well, with the runner in scoring position right there on second base, that dive prevents a run. But on top of it, you get it out. I'd be happy with just preventing a run. Nice job right there. Here's Ryan Mountcastle looking to rebound today. He was 0 for 4 last night. First oh, offering and it just misses. At the belt and fires. And yeah, that's well, outside. That he hasn't wanted to challenge him. Both of those pitches off the plate away. Don't expect anything down the heart of the plate. You may just have to be patient and take your walk here. 2-0 to Cal. Here it comes. Nope. And that one just missed off the outside edge. No score here, but a runner at third with one down. That one finds the corner. Strike one. Out there on the mound, he's setting the tone early with the fastball. 98 miles per hour up on the scoreboard. Next offering is foul back.
Castillo one of the best strikeout pitchers in the game and that certainly is a benefit to him when he's in a spot like this. Hit in the air right field. Hernandez settles underneath it. Drops into the glove. Runner tags from third. The throw is offline and he's in to score. And it's 1-0. Well, that's a quality at bat right there. You know the situation. You need something in the air and deep enough. And that's exactly what he did. Good pass to the baseball. And now it's Austin Hayes. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. Yeah, if you're going to be in the game in high leverage situations, you've got to be able to get the swing and miss and put hitters away. Next pitch is downstairs. And that one is lifted in the air. Kelnick makes the play, and that is that. One run on one base hit, no errors, no one left. On to the bottom of the first. It's the Orioles one, and the Mariners coming to bat. Back in Seattle, today's starting pitcher, Dean Kremer. And Singy, it's unique these days, but he's more of a pitch-to-contact type of guy. Yeah, Boogie, he doesn't rely too heavily on the strikeout. He knows he needs to miss barrels, get some soft contact, let the defense do work behind him. And I think a guy like that can keep a good tempo, don't give hitters time to adjust or think. They can move through a ball game, and you look off, they're in line for a quality start. We'll see what he's got in this one. Swang and a line drive. Base hit out of the center field. Man aboard on the leadoff single. He was all over that one. Everything was on time and flew it in that swing. Got a pitch he could get the barrel on and lined it into center for the knock. Those always feel good. Now it's going to be Ty France. And first offering is fouled off. Ty France, a pretty cool story. A 34th round pick in 2015 out of San Diego State. And in 2022, he was an all star. Softly hit the third. And he grabs it in foul ground. And the right hander deals on the ground left side six four three and they turn the double play and now Julio Rodriguez In there for strike one. Strike two. Next offering is outside. And now it's even up. Oh, he might have to look for a different put away pitch right here, too, too. He's already seen the curveball a couple of times in this at bat, so might have it timed up and ready for it. The 2 2. Ah, look out. That fastball drilled him. He had two strikes on him. And he hit him. Oh, looks like it got him in the forearm. Not much padding in that spot. So we'll see him tatted up tomorrow with he's the bruise, safe. likely. Over to first, and he's safe. Here's Jerry Kelnick. And misses inside. inside.
Now move to first. Rodriguez gets back easily. Hard ground ball, base knock. They stop the lead runner at second. Now two on with two outs. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. There was nothing cheap about the way he got that one through the infield. That was ripped. Caught out in front and didn't get under it like he would have liked, but definitely put a good swing on it. Hey, Eugenio Suarez up to hit down. That Aye. one's in there. Strike one. Two outs, a couple of base runners at first and second. Next pitch downstairs. One and two to count. Got him looking for the K. He's in a tough spot, had to make a great pitch, did it, got the strikeout, gets out of the jam. Clearly, he's happy with those results. Top of the second, Anthony Santander at the plate. The designated hitter, Anthony Santander. Castillo back to work. Swings through that All one. Outside corner, there's a strike. The 0-2. And ball. now one and two. One ball, two strikes. And yeah, the one two misses to even the count. And a swing and a miss. One out in the second. Well, he hadn't seen that change up the entire at bat until that put away pitch. And it's pretty tough to deal the with as a hitter. You're up there battling, the trying to read and react with two strikes. And then all of a sudden, the pitch comes out of nowhere and it's a good change up. It's just almost impossible to hit it when you haven't seen it. Ramon Urias digs in now. Good defender. He's been inconsistent offensively. There's a strike. Well, Ramon Urias, spectacular defender, won a gold glove in 2022 and became the first Orioles third baseman to win a gold glove since, you know who, boo? Manny Machado? That's right, in 2015. And a swing and a miss there. Good late sink on that fastball. Out of the hand looks so good, and then... By the time he gets in the hitting zone, hard to get the barrel to it. And one that one is in the dirt. Strikes. And the count one and two. And a ball evens the count. Kicks and fires. Swing, and that ball smashed on a line. And no one can get there. Now he'll turn for second. And that's a two-bagger. Drove that ball nicely, put a great swing on it, and it jumped off his back. Kind of put it all together there, and he's rewarded with the double. So next to hit for Baltimore, Gunnar Henderson. Oh. 
Takes the corner, and it's 0-1. Righty delivers. Hit hard, but foul off to the left. And a pitch. Foul ball still 0-2. Left-hand batter waits. And that skips in the dirt. Swings and lines a base hit into left field. Throw comes into third, and they're at the corners with only one out. Really nice job, a two-strike hit, and that it, he let it get deep, took the barrel right to it, and then extended through the swing for the line drive base hit. Runners on the corners with one gone. Colton Kowser, the next to hit. Making his debut in the middle of the season after missing out on the opening day roster. I don't think anyone's surprised the former first rounder made it to this level. It was more a question of when and not if, Siggy. Late swing, foul to the left. Yeah, as you say, Boog, it's uh, something we've been waiting for, for him to get here. We knew all along it was going to happen at some point, And now that he's at the big league level, he's going to focus on whatever it takes to stay up here. First and third, one down. Right side. That ball is foul. Left hand hitter waits. That's a ball. Fouled off the plate. They'll do it again. And a one-two again. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Couldn't hit the fastball at the knees. Definitely made him chase it a little bit out of the zone right there. I don't think that's a strike if he takes it. Pretty textbook pitching. Get ahead in the count. Get the guy in the box on his heels and then force him to chase your pitch where he doesn't have much of a chance to do any damage. Jorge Mateo now. Three hits last night, so he was a big factor in getting that win. First offering misses badly for ball one. Corners are occupied with two down. Line drive, base hit. Runner from third comes across. It's 2-0. Well, he comes through clutch with the RBI single. That was big. That's a good sound coming off the bat, man. And as he connected out front and ripped it into the outfield, that's one of those swings where you just don't even feel the ball hit the barrel. That's a pure stroke. Here's the Orioles' leadoff hitter, Cedric Mullins. Led off the game with a double in his first at bat and later scored. Out to short. They get the force, and the inning is over. So one run in the inning on this base hit, and it's two zip. You're dialed into the show. Back at T-Mobile Park, bottom half of inning number two, and here is Cal Raleigh. And a pitch. Tries to check his swing. Now a look to third. And James Kingsley says he won a round. Here comes a pitch. Swing and a miss. Oh, with two now. Next offering misses down and away. Right. 
in the air center field. Mullins makes the play and there's one down. Batting seven. The right field. And now Teoscar Hernandez. Hernandez. First nope. pitch and he just misses. Now wanted one. One ball, one strike. So now one and two. One ball, two strikes. And now two, two and two. two. Check swing on the 2-2. Appeal to first. No swing. He held up. Patrick Johnson with the call there. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. Well, a swing like that can help you come out of the struggle. We saw the numbers coming into the ball game. But all he's trying to do at this point is help his team win. Now it's John Murphy. That hits the dirt. Ball one. Swings through that one for strike one. Throw over to first. No, Hernandez back in standing. And a 1-1. One -one. And a foul ball. And here it comes. Runner on the goal. Pitch misses in. Throw to second. See? Well, we all know this team is struggling right now, and sometimes you just got to do something different to generate some offense. A little more aggressive right there to put the pressure on the opponent. We'll see if it pays off on the scoreboard for these guys. Runner at second here, one gone. Hit hard on the ground is short. The throw to first, two away. Batting up. The second baseman. Colton Wong up to hit. So RBI spot, but Chris, this is a guy that is not really swinging the bat all that well here. In this situation, you have a real good opportunity to get swings and misses and record a strikeout. I think you attack him in this spot. That Eight. one's in there, 0-1. One. One. And strike two. Oh, two is the count. Swings and misses on the fastball up in the zone for the strikeout. One left for Seattle. They trail it here 2 0.
and welcome back. And here's the catcher, Adley Rutschman. This guy, one of the best Adley. defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. And strike one to the catcher. Really good athlete. And many times we talk about, you know, the feet of infielders. This catcher as well, really quick feet. He's able to recognize the pitch, see the trajectory, and get oh, into a spot down. where he can block those balls and keep them from going to the backstop. Now bad at the first baseman, Ryan. And into the box for Baltimore, Ryan Mountcastle. Drove in a run with a sack fly his first time up. Really impressive with the way he frames, the way that he sets it up, because sometimes those pitches are off the plate, but because he sets up and presents oh, it so what? well, he steals strikes for his pitcher. One down, base is empty. Strike two. Ball one, one ball, there. Two strike. Swing and a miss. Pulled the string on the changeup. Been a pretty rough start to this series for him at the plate. Three strikeouts in the first game yesterday. Another one right there. They clearly got a great plan for how to deal with this guy right now. And next for the Orioles, Austin Hayes. They say you win. Off the mark there, and it's one and one. Comes up empty. That's strike two. Benny really sells the changeup with that arm action. That one the other way. That'll drop in as he plays it on a hop. Well, that certainly feels good when you can win the at bat after being down in the count, up against it with two strikes right there. Pretty much a model swing on that one as he ripped it into the opposite field gap. And I'm sure he's going to be watching that one back on video because that's the kind of swing you want to bottle. So many positives that led to that knock. And here is Anthony Santander. That one pushed foul out of play off to the left. And the 01. This one popped up. Foul ground first base side. France brings it in for the third out. One left for the Orioles. They're up 2 nothing. Bottom of the inning, and the batter will be the shortstop, J.P. Crawford. Not shortstop. J.P. Crawford. Yeah, the right hater back to work. And that drops in for a strike. That's a strike, and it's nothing in two. No ball, two strikes. And a foul ball, he stays alive. And the pitch. Now one nope. miss. Outside. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Just a mid-90s challenge fastball right there. Not much to it. And I'm sure he'd love another swing at it because it was in a very hittable location. Those are the swings where you can sometimes start to question yourself as a hitter and say, how did I miss that? But you know what happens. And stepping in for the Mariners, Ty France. 
That Whoa, hits the dirt. Down. And that is ball one. The wind and the pitch. Out there to center. Mullins in pursuit. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And yeah, there's two away. Now batting. The center fielder. And now for Seattle, Julio Rodriguez. He was plunked in his first trip to the plate. And yeah, that's in there for strike one. Oh, and one. Inside that's just inside. missed. The wind of the pitch. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Two down. Nobody on. Twings and misses. It's a strikeout. Pulled the string on the field. Welcome back. Out of the fourth. Now it's the second baseman, the second Ramon baseman. Urias. Ramon Urias. Castillo back to work. On the ground, right side, and it goes just foul. You know, these Orioles showing great discipline at the plate, and patience definitely seems to be the name of their game in this one. They're doing a good job of working the pitch count, and they've been able to push a couple of runs across to score as well. And there's a rocket into the outfield. Wasting no time. He's two for two now on the night and just a triple and home run away from the cycle. Seriously, we're starting with this already. So next to hit for Baltimore, Gunnar Henderson. One for one. He singled the left his first time through. Called strike, a sinker at the bottom of the zone. Still relatively early, but with a pair of runs already on the board, the ripple effect of that high pitch count might set him up to do more damage later in this game. Next offering is downstairs. Kicks and deals. Out towards left center. Kelnick should have this one. Makes the grab one away. Now batting left fielder. Colton Kowser. Here's the left fielder, Colton Kowser. And there's one thing on his mind this at bat, getting that first hit at the big league level. That misses the zone. 1 and 0. Oh. Count 1 and 0. Oh. The pitch. One ball, one strike. Good eye right there. The count two and one. And a swing to miss. Two strikes. On the ground to first, could be two. 
flips it. That's one. Back to the pitcher covering. It's a double play. Nicely done, and that'll do it. One hit in the inning, but nothing more than that. To the bottom of inning number four now. It's the Orioles two and the Mariners nothing. Bottom of the fourth, and now it's the cleanup hitter for the Mariners, Jared Kelvin. The pitch. There's the strike. Well, he's been incredibly efficient in this one. First pitch strike percentage over 70%. That's well above league average, and that's what's allowed him to pitch well up into this point. Next offering upstairs. 1-0. Swings through that one out in front that time. Generally, second, third time through the lineup, you want to be able to lean on those secondary pitches and command them. Looks like he's doing a nice job of it. Ah, that hit him. And the leadoff man is aboard to start the inning. No, Boog, I'll tell you firsthand, retired players, we miss a lot of things about playing the game in our playing days, but getting drilled by a pitch like that usually isn't something we talk about. Suarez up to bat next lays off for a ball. You don't want to get beat by a fastball in and he spits on that one. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Filthy change up right there. Just pulled the string. Next offering is in for a strike. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of a double play here. The pitch. And now the count is even. It's a good take. Nobody out. Runner at first. Lifted in the air, right field. Hayes has it sized up. Brings it in. And there's one away. Yeah, I'm looking at his body language, and he just doesn't seem like things are in sync. And the ball's just not coming off his bat the way it did earlier in the regular season. And up next for Seattle, Cal Raleigh. Flied out to center in his first at bat. Definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. Should be an inning-ending double play. There's a strike. Oh, and one. Check on the runner. Back in safe, really close. And the righty deals. Clips the corner. That is strike two. And a good eye there. Really good take, especially with two strikes. The next pitch misses, and it's two and two. Right hander kicks deals. Popped up left side. Henderson has a beat on it and puts the squeeze on it. That's out number two. No, that now was a pitch you got to crush. Unbelievable that he missed it right there. I'm telling you, he's going to be frustrated with himself until his next at bat. Here's Teoscar Hernandez. And he's already singled in this game. Swings through that one. 0 oh, 1. And the pitch. And that curveball drops in there for a strike. That big curve inside's a pitch that can buckle you a little bit. Looks like a fastball out of the hand and then just drops over that inside part of the plate. Ground ball, left side, and foul ball.
Move to first. Back oh, in there standing. Gets a piece, and it stays 0-2. And he deals. Out to short. They take the force out, third out. So no runs on no hits, no errors, and a runner left. We played four. It's the Orioles two, and the Mariners nothing. Back here at the ballpark, top five, John Shabby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Jorge Mateo. Mateo. The right hander back to work. Fought off foul. Next offering is in for a strike. Oh, two, get down. Next offering is fouled back. The 0 2. Slider misses outside. And downstairs. Two strike. Popped up. He makes the grab. One away. Now batter. So back to the, the top of the field. Orioles lineup. Cedric and now the center fielder, Mullins. Cedric Mullins. Ball one. And takes low for ball one. And nope. that's too that's high. 2 0. Just oh, missed. He hasn't fallen behind in the count like this all day. He's in danger of walking his first batter right here. Swing and a miss as they green light him. 3 0 <laughs> hack right there. Say, man, I'm going to go for it. Swing and a miss. Three and two now. Righty to the plate. Rolled slowly to first. France. They get the tag on him, and that's the second out. Now batting. Ketchum. Adley Rutschman. Now here is Adley Rutschman. He is at the top of the game in terms of defense at the catching spot. It's so impressive because these guys have to do so much study and preparation for their pitchers, for opposing hitters, and really their number one job is to guide that staff through a ball game. And so when you also can turn it up offensively and be a force there, that is a win-win every manager's dream. Here's the 0-2. One ball, two strikes. Ripped to short, snagged on a bounce. Crawford throws the first in time. Rutschman retired. That's the third out. No runs, no hits, no errors. Last half of the fifth coming up. It's the Orioles two and the Mariners nothing. Back in Seattle. So here's Murphy now. All these fans the definitely pitcher. want to get involved in the game. All it's going to take is to get the leadoff man or even a base runner on. And a pitch. And a good fastball to start him off at strike one. The 
wind of the pitch. Good oh. eye in that spot. Too close for me, partner, to take that 0-2 fastball, but for whatever reasons, he let it go by. He's still in the at-bat. I don't think he'll let the next one go. And it's even up. Here's a high chopper. Urias gets it to first, and that's the first out in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the second baseman, Colton Wong. 0 for 1, he struck out swinging last time. First offering, misses the mark. This guy's seen two change-ups in a row. Could be a little vulnerable for a fastball right here. The 1-1 one -one is fouled off. Next pitch inside. Two and two. And he can't hang on. No throw, and he's out at first. Everything came together for him. I really like the approach of that swing. That was a good change up on the corner, but he recognized it early, did get jumpy, and just smacked it to the opposite field. Here's the shortstop at the play, J.P. Crawford. Kremer picks the first. Wong back easily. And first offering is fouled off. The kick and the pitch. Runner goes. Base knock right field. Throw into third. The first baseman, number 23. John. And here's the first baseman, Ty France. And there's the strike. Runners are at the corners, one away. Next offering upstairs. One one. Movement in the Orioles' bullpen. Dylan Tate is up and throwing for Brandon High. Number 79 getting loose as well. He's looking for a ground ball to get a double play and out of this jam. The one two and yeah, that's a little high this is a situation where the hitter is looking for something up in the zone that he can get his arms extended what you have to be careful of is that pitch that's up that's in on your hands that'll pop you up in the infield and that's exactly what the pitcher wants two two now come back to the mound to second for one over to first that's two nicely done one six three and that will end the inning no runs on two hits, no errors, and one man left. We're through five. It's the Orioles two and the Mariners nothing. Top six and into the box for Baltimore, Ryan Mountcastle. Castillo back to work. Swing and a tapper that rolls foul. Singy Ryan Mountcastle, a former first-round pick by the Orioles in 2015. Here's the thing that gets me, though. He owns his own karaoke machine. 
And can I tell you, I've never done karaoke in my life. You got to try it sometime. Singy, what's your go-to karaoke song? Yeah, probably some song that'll cost us too much to mention in this broadcast. Next offering popped in the air, right field. And there's one down. The right fielder, number 21. Austin so now the Orioles cleanup Hayes. hitter, Austin Hayes. Check swing, but he went too far. Going one. That one is upstairs. Close, but called a ball. And it's two and one. Lined in the left center, base hit. Now batting, designated hitter, Anthony Santander. Man at first with one gone, Anthony Santander. The next to hit for the Orioles. Rudder takes off. Foul ball there. Castillo will look to first, and he's back in on a dive. Righty delivers, pulls that one foul. And one and two. Two strikes. The pitch. Struck him out looking. He's got to be frustrated with that call. So he gets the call and picks up the strikeout looking. Sometimes with a good hitter at the plate, he'll be the one to get the benefit of the doubt if he lays off on a close pitch like that, but just not right there. Strike zone definitely expanded a little bit with two strikes. And yeah, the batter now, Ramon Urias. In there for strike one. Oh, one's the count. Right through there for a strike. Oh, and two now. Good eye right there. And that's awfully close. I don't know how you take that. He's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well right now. Line to left. Kelnick makes the play and it's out number three. One hit, one left. Hard of the order, three, four, five coming up. It's the Orioles two and the Mariners nothing. Bottom of the sixth inning and stepping in for the Mariners, Julio Rodriguez. We talk about guys with good speed and definitely he has it, but pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. There's a strike. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there are certain times the ball comes off the bat, automatically that team that hit it thinks that they've got a base hit or they may have extra bases, and he just takes it away. Next pitch just misses, and that's ball one. And what makes him even quicker is the fact that he's so dialed in on the pitch as it's moving through the hitting zone. He can see how that hitter's lined up, what he's trying to do, and where that pitch is going to end up, which gives him that really quick first step, and that's why he makes so many great plays. Makes the catch, and there's one gone. Now battle. The left fielder. Jared Kelman. 
Up next for the Mariners. That's in there. That's strike one. Swing and a miss as he was late that time. Out to center. Mullins settles under it. He's there. He's got it. Out number two. Now batting, third baseman. Hey, Eugenio Suarez up to the plate now. On the ground, and that chance handled. Not in time, and he reaches safely. Definitely a tough play right there, and he had a little trouble on the transfer. Didn't seem to be able to get the grip and get rid of it, and that made all the difference. You tell me so, man aboard. Now it's the Mariners' DH. Cal Raleigh. He's a catcher by trade, but the DH here in this one. That misses. Ball one. Two outs. Yeah. And that's a strike. The one one. In the air, left side. Kowser settles underneath it. And makes the play, and that's out number three. So no runs here on a base hit, no errors, and one left. Seventh inning coming up. It's the Orioles two and the Mariners nothing. Welcome back. We're in the seventh. We have a new pitcher on the mound, Gabe Spire. He pitched yesterday, and we'll see him once again. Now the third baseman, Gunnar Henderson. The third baseman. Well, on paper, it's favorable to have a fairly quick inning here with two of the three hitters he's set to face batting from the left side, same side he throws from. There's the strike. You know, these Orioles, digging into their numbers, have to be happy with the swings they're taking. They've been lining the ball all over the ballpark, and unfortunately, sometimes it's right into a glove. But still, they've hit nine line drives so far, and that's something they should feel very good about. Snags it on the run. One down. Colton Kowser, the next to hit for the Orioles. Speaking of those line drives, you can't get too discouraged when they don't drop in for you. It's important to remember that you pretty much did everything right, and that's just baseball sometimes. And there's a ball. One, no strike. Next offering is in for a strike. Activity in the bullpen. Matt Festa appears to be getting ready for manager Scott Service. The 1-1. Popped up. Crawford under it. He's got it. There's two away. Well, oh, that's a frustrating into the at bat for the hitter right there. I mean, that pitch was right down the middle. I think he got a little too excited, came out of his mechanics, and instead of driving that ball somewhere, he popped it up. Unfortunate for him. Mateo in the box again, takes the strike. Strike two. At the belt and fires. 
That one misses. Two balls, two strikes. And a ground ball to first. He steps on the bag. Third out, and that ends the frame. One, two, three, go the Orioles. But they're on top, two nothing. And welcome back. Now it's the right fielder, Teoscar Hernandez. Here comes a pitch. Just missed. Meanwhile, activity in the bullpen. Ryan Baker appears to be getting loose. Number 78 getting cranked up as well. The 1 0. In the air out towards right center. Mullins on his horse. Got it. Nice grab. And a quick out number one. That's just a really nice catch on now the run it. right there. He saved extra Go. bases for sure. If the pitcher's his friend, he'll give him a second to catch his breath before he's ready to deal the next pitch. Swings and blasts one deep to left center. That one back. You can kiss it goodbye. Tom Murphy sends it out. That's his 50th career homer. And they're on the board. It's 2-1. When you're working with this kind of velocity, so critical that you move the ball around work quickly and make sure that you keep that hitter off balance clearly not fooled by the location or the velocity he was all over that fastball manager out of the dugout now and it looks like we'll see a change on the mound Dean Kremer won't go any further and he leaves with the lead after giving them some decent innings we'll be back with a new pitcher in a moment Left-hander out of the bullpen, number 79. He's making his fourth appearance of the season. Nick Vespi. Now it's the second baseman, Colt Luong. And he bunts, but that's a foul ball. The tying run at the plate. This one in the air right field. And there are two outs. Well, such a confidence boost for a reliever to come number into the ball game three. and get the first hitter he faces. Just makes everything slow down a little bit. And then from there can really settle in. Crawford in the box now. No balls and a strike. The old one is outside, and it's a ball and a strike. Looking to get the tying run on base. Swings and misses. One and two. The pitch started in and ended up on the outside edge. Just changing planes and very difficult, especially for a left-handed hitter to track. And another ball. This is a really good feeling for a hitter. At this point in the ball game, you know that they don't want to walk you, so you're going to get a pitch to hit. You just better not miss it. Kicks and fires. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Oh, very close with the location right there. It's just tough to get rewarded on the call when pitches near the top of the strike zone. And now it's going to be Ty France. Right 
right now. They're looking for something hit hard into the gaps. Give them an opportunity with two outs to score that run from first. Well, with the tie-in run at first base, he's looking for something he can get a lot of barrel on. Drive it into a gap and score that run from first base. And a pitch. This one smacked out to left center. And no one can get there. It falls in. Heading for the plate. To the plate. Safe. And we are tied. Huge game tying at bat right there. Came through in a big spot to drive in the run. As soon as that one shot off his barrel, he was thinking extra bases. Really nice job of getting the bat out front, but not hooking around it or rolling over it. Just kept the swing on plane and smoked that thing into the gap. A chance now to take the lead, and at this point in the game, that could be a deciding run. And now Julio Rodriguez. Swing and a miss. It's 0-1. And here it comes. Hammered down the line. Should be extra bases. Flying around third is France. He scores. It's 3-2. Anytime you rip a line drive the other way, you feel really good about what you did at the plate. You trusted your hands, you let the ball travel, and you took the barrel straight to it. That's great work right there. So they turn to the lefty in this spot, CNL Perez. He has a great slider with tons of movement. And now for Seattle, Jared Kellner. There's a strike. Fouled off. He was late. Runner leads away at second. Got him looking. Inning over, and it could have been worse. Three runs on three hits. One a solo shot. Eighth inning coming up. It's the Mariners three and the Orioles two. Justin Topa gets the call from the pen. Hasn't pitched in the last three days. Here's the Orioles' leadoff hitter, Cedric Mullins. One for three. The pitch. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Movement in the bullpen. Paul Seawall, the closer, is getting loose. The 0 1. Base hit into right center. Always oh, feels amazing word. getting a job done when the team needs you to come through. It's just bigger than your own individual stats. And man, I'll tell you, a line drive like that into the gap just feels so good. It's feedback that you had everything on time and in control from start to finish with your swing. And now a chance to maybe get creative on offense with good speed on first. On the ground of first. Could be two. France toss the second. Back to first. Double play. 3-6-3. Three, three, nicely done. For me, that's one of the toughest double plays to turn on the infield. The first baseman has to get inside, create a throwing lane to hit that middle infielder to start the double play. And then from there, completing it back to first. Really good job all the way around. And now the first baseman, Ryan Mountcastle. They say it went. Right handed reliever and a foul ball.
puts it in the air out towards left center. Rodriguez racing makes the catch. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. Home half of inning number eight straight ahead. It's the Mariners three and the Orioles two. Dylan Tate gets handed the rock out of the pen. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their guys a chance to fight back into the game. Number 55, Dylan Tate. And stepping in for the Mariners, Eugenio Suarez. The third baseman, Eugenio Suarez. The wind and the pitch. That one finds the zone. 0-1. No need to offer that pitch until you get to two strikes. It's just a low percentage of success when you want to try to go after that down and away pitch. Comes up empty on the swing. 0-2 oh, now. Real ugly 0-1 swing right there. As a pitcher, got to be hunting for that strikeout. Keep him off balance. Send him back to the dugout. And the pitch. And oh. that's downstairs and outside. The guy at the plate could recognize slider out of the hand. Didn't stay in the tunnel very long in terms of depth and perception. He knew right away it was an off-speed pitch. And now it's oh, even right up. Down. Swing and a ground ball out to short. Quips it to Mountcastle. One up, one down. Now back, the designated hitter, Cal Raleigh. So now the DH spot, Cal Raleigh. You tell me you were so good about being on me. First pitch, and that's in for a strike. takes a strike quickly into an 0 2 count both pitches were down in the zone I think you set your sights a little bit higher because you'll have a tendency to chase if you Two look strikes. down in that area next All offering two. misses and the count is even two and two Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Two gone. Stood absolutely no chance on that slider right there, and I don't mean to laugh, but that's a tough one. I mean, pretty much a perfect strikeout pitch. I mean, it looks like a fastball middle in, kind of has cutter action, and it just bunches you up to whereas you can't get your hands through and the barrel to it, and not much you can do unless you recognize the spin early and you spit on it. And now the right fielder, Teoscar Hernandez. Ball. And the first pitch misses for ball Count one. And yeah, that's Ball's outside. The 2 0 is in for a strike. Kicks and deals. That one fouled off two and two. Yeah, the right hander deals. They tried to get him to chase on a slider down and away. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Two down, nobody on. And that's ball four. Ball four. Well, he opted to go with the off-speed stuff on that 3-2 the with the bases empty. Two. Close pitch. But now he's got to work out of the stretch. 
And now the catcher comes up to him. Tom Murphy. Moved to first. Hernandez dives back in safely. First pitch doesn't find the zone. Activity in the bullpen for Baltimore. Ryan Baker, the young right-hander, up and throwing. Coulomb, a left-hander, also throwing. The pitch. And it's one and one. Just nope. missed. Next offering is down low. Now a high fly ball out to left center. Makes the catch. And that is that. Mariners leave one. But they're up three to two. So they turn to the veteran pitcher in this spot, Paul Seawall. And he's had his struggles so far this year, as you can see the inflated ERA. Looking to bring that down a little bit right here. Now it's the right fielder, Austin Hayes. Corner infielders guarding the lines, trying to prevent extra bases. The pitch. On the ground, out to short. On to France. Out, leading off the top of the ninth, and they take care of a big threat right there. Anthony Santander. So now here's the DH. Anthony Santander. A lot of times you're looking for a guy to get that tie and run on base, but because of the power, you want him to tie up the game with one swing here. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Next pitch misses outside. One and one. Outside. Back to back breaking pitches away. You get the feeling as a hitter that the pitcher is afraid of you, that he doesn't want to challenge you. So I think the confidence level is raised right here. The 2 1. There's a strike. One run game here at the top of the ninth. The next okay. offering misses, and the count's full. Ramon Urias waiting for a turn at the plate. And the righty deals. And the tying run is on base. They're not ready to go home quite yet. Ramon Urias, the next to hit for the Orioles. Good contact guy, good defender. That pitch clips the outside corner. That's strike one. Here's a high fly ball out to center. Rodriguez settles under it. Two down. The first baseman of the two, Gunner Henderson. Gunner Henderson will hit next. Typically, the outfield defense will play a little bit deeper just to keep the ball in front, make sure that runner on first doesn't come all the way around to score and tie this ball game up. Ball one, no strikes. Crowd locked in right now. One run game here in the ninth. He was late there. Strike one. one. Threw that fastball right by him. Slightly elevated. That's a confidence boost for this guy out there on the mound. See if he continues to climb the ladder. That one misses. 
Now two balls and a strike. Next offering, pop foul off to the right out of play. Is just one strike away. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. Just one. Strike away. Here's his swing. Now it appeal to third. Ah, and he punches him out. He won around. Every team 